quite a few of them. A plethora of point guards are out there. And when you're looking at these players and you're thinking about maybe some teams that can make some serious moves, keep in mind the Knicks have more than $50 million in cap space. The Mavs can get up to around 30. Let's welcome in our very good friend, former NBA champ, Rip Hamilton. Rip, Kawhi, Chris Paul declining their player options. We pretty much anticipated both of those things happening. We believe they want to stay with their current teams. So how do you see both of these deals potentially working out? Do they work out or is there a chance they move on? Well, Amanda, yes. I think that we all were expecting this, especially uh, from Kawhi Leonard. Uh, just the amount of money that he can make. If he opts out, kind of taking a page out of the LeBron James book, not signing real long term deals, signing, you know, short term deals where he can come back right now and be unrestricted. I mean, be be a free agent, uh, sign with the Clippers two year deal and opt out again uh, after the first year. And the reason why uh, it, it favors him, because if he does, if he does opt out, he can sign of next year's deal. He can sign a five year, two hundred and thirty five million dollar deal instead of signing a four-year 176 million dollar deal so for him especially when you get into your 30s and a lot of these teams use age always when it comes to signing new deals and contracts i think this is something that would be better fit for him uh his family and, and everything that you know the, all the reasons why he wanted to come and be a los angeles clippers what about chris paul there do you think he ends up staying I do. I, I think Chris uh, really got a good thing going here uh, in Phoenix. Uh, the, his chemistry, uh, that was the was, was probably the only question mark uh, with Devin Booker, especially at the beginning of the system, just knowing that Devin played on the ball for the previous couple years. And now you got Chris, who's a guy that plays, he has most of success uh, being on the ball. Uh, what he was able to do with this team, especially uh, getting them all the way to the NBA Finals, uh, was really unmatched. I mean, this guy came out and, in my opinion, could have been the MVP this year. So uh, knowing Chris, he wants to come back. He wants to run it back. Uh, yes, that the Milwaukee Bucks did a great job of really figuring them, figuring them out, especially in the finals. But I believe if you want to give your team a chance to win, especially with a young guard with Devin Booker, you got to bring Chris Paul back in. Knowing Chris Paul, he wants to opt out so he can sign a longer term deal because uh, he wants to play well into his 40s. When he alluded to that at the end of the finals, Rip, uh, we're here in South Florida. We have a ton of Heat fans, so I need you to talk to them right now because our whole newsroom is above. The Heat could be setting themselves up not to make just one, but potentially two big moves here in free agency. So yesterday, they declined to Andre Iguodala's player option. They picked up Goran Dragic's. Many believing that may be to try to set up this, to land both Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan, of course, who were teammates together for six seasons in Toronto. How would you like this move, and do you think it's even likely of it happening? You know what, I, 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 would, I would love it for the Miami Heat because when you think about the Miami Heat culture, right, the, the people that they usually uh, add to their roster, hard-nosed, tough-minded people, play both sides of the floor, willing to leave it on the line each and every night. Kyle Lowry is that. He's a guy, he's one of the toughest guys that I competed against uh, in my career and is really showcasing now in the NBA today. Uh, he's they they need a, a a leader. They need a guy that can really make big plays, especially in playoff situations. I feel as though the Miami Heat took a step back uh, this season, and especially their young guys that they had expectations to come out and kind of take that next step to get this team over the hump. If you're able to add a Kyle Lowry, a DeMar DeRozan, guys that already have a relationship on the floor, been best friends their whole entire career, you're not waiting around for these guys to get chemistry among each other. And especially with, with Kyle Lowry's relationship with, with Jimmy Butler. These guys played uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in USA Basketball, played, uh, practiced together in the summertime. This would be real. This would be the, the the addition that they need to make it to the next step if they want to get back to the NBA Finals. We know that John Collins made himself some money there in the postseason. Now, report he is likely to go ahead re-sign with the Hawks. Uh, I'm curious if you see that happening, and if so, what sort of contract, what sort of money and years are we looking at? Yeah, you got to remember the Atlanta Hawks offered him. Uh, four-year 90 million uh, early in the season and he rejected it and he turned it down and uh, some people thought you know hey maybe he should have took the money but the way 
He performed, especially late in the season, especially in the playoffs. He did himself. He he, he actually did the right thing. Uh, this guy right here is one of the most athletic, uh, athletic players that we've got in the NBA. And the one thing that I love about him is you don't have to call a play for him. A lot of his points, a lot of his production has come off guys like Trey Young getting into the seams of the defense, trying to make plays for him. But he understands who he is. And that's very hard, especially when you look at the NBA today, especially with guys with the money play, with guys looking at, hey, you know what? I need to average uh, this amount of points and this amount of rebounds to get paid. No, he did it the right way. He trusted in Nate McMillan to put him in the right spots on the floor. He ran the floor. He defended hard. And it really showcased his game. So I do believe if the Atlanta Hawks want to uh, take the next step, they, they got to bring him back. But look look forward to him signing somewhere in the 125 to $130 million range. I mean, you mentioned the next step for the Hawks. They already surprised us in this postseason going further than a lot of us thought they'd go ahead. Um, if they get that deal done, how do you see this Hawks team next season? Oh, man, this is, look, this team is one of, was one of the most exciting teams in the playoffs. But uh, Trey Young went from a, a guy that everybody would say, okay, he could be a really special player if he does this, that, and the third. This year he came out and showcased it. He just didn't worry about his home stats from a scoring standpoint. He made all the little plays. He got guys involved. And Nate McMillan did a great job of being the leader of this team. Just imagine if they get another full year back with Nate and understanding his concepts. This is a fun and, and exciting team, especially when you got Trey Young now look, looked upon as being a superstar. Yeah, it's so fun. We had so much fun watching that Hawks team. Um, let's talk about Lonzo Ball, one of the most interesting cases out there. There have been multiple teams linked to him. And the one that keeps coming up more and more often right now as we get closer to this is the Bulls, a report they could be looking at uh, potentially a four-year deal with more than $80 million with him. So what do you think about Lonzo Ball to the Bulls potentially? Well, you heard that the Bulls had interest in him, uh, especially early on. Uh, and I think that Lonzo Wall brings brings a lot of uh, one length to the Chicago Bulls team. One and another thing, you can take Zach Levine off the, off the ball. Uh, Zach is one of the best scorers that we got in, in, in the lead. I think he's a very underrated two guard that we don't really talk about and give him his props. But Alonzo Ball is a guy that comes in and now nobody on the team has to force shots. He can get to the uh, seams of the defense. He can make plays for everybody. But the thing that I'm most improved with him is his 37% from the three-point line. I think that a lot of people didn't think that he could stroke the ball from, from that range. But he did a great job of really picking up his game, working on his game, working on his shots, and knocking down that shot. So I, I do believe that this will be a great addition for the Chicago Bulls. We got to talk about Melo, 37 years old now. Um, multiple teams we know are interested in him on CBSSports.com. We actually have an article that he may be waiting. He is waiting from that call from the Lakers. He wants a ring. This is somebody who was a 10-time All-Star, 37 years old. Where would you like to see him land? And then also maybe the team where he has the best chance of getting that ring. I, I, Amanda, I want to see Melo in, in, in that purple and gold with LeBron James. These guys have been best friends forever, and this is something that they talked about, especially early in their career, uh, him, Chris Paul, and uh, Dwayne Wade. So if Melo get an opportunity to play with the Lakers, I think that would be the fit for them. As you know, they went out and got Russell Westbrook. Hey, a lot of people say, hey, does, does, does all that fit for this team? But LeBron is one of the most unselfish guys that we have ever seen, unselfish superstars. And he understands Melo's game. He understands where Melo likes the ball at, where his spots are at, and what he can do, especially in big games. So I feel as though when you look at Melo right now, he can't be the focal point of your offense. He can't be the first, second, and maybe not even the third option on your team. But he can be a guy that earns respect from the opposing teams when you got him on the floor. He's still a great knockdown shooter. He can still knock down uh, big baskets in the post. If he gets the opportunity to play with LeBron James, that will be, be, be special. I think that, and I think that that will be his best chance of winning the ring. Well, not just that. I mean, LeBron can be like, I know you guys are calling me old. He's six months older than me. He's 37. I'm 36 right now. I am the young guy here. Uh, Rip Hamilton, I'm not sure if you've been, have you been coaching over the weekend? Is that what the voice thing is? Are we sipping tea? Anytime you see me sipping tea, it's that AAU coaching again, yelling at kids. And that's something that I told 
all the dads. Don't yell at the kids, but mostly I'm yelling at the referees like Rashid Wallace used to do all the time. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.